It's coffee break. break. Welcome back. We're back. Um, in the world of entertainment news, not much happened. Not much has happened this week. <laughs> oh, I did. Did you hear about Amber Heard? What in an interview? What? I don't know how old this is. But this one was funny. <laughs> what happened? I once the trial was done, I immediately so, stopped giving it. <laughs> she's in this interview, and the the person asks. A lot of people say that you're faking it and you're lying, right? You're, you're acting. Mm -hmm. She goes, I wasn't acting. I wasn't lying. Something along the lines that you got this from the guy who made the world believe he had scissors for hands. I did see this. And just like, <laughs> babe, you know, did you do you think he had scissors for hands? And that's everyone's <laughs> question right now is, wait, are like, you the only one who got fooled? Do you know what acting is? <laughs> nah, she fucking, she has tanked her career so much. Like, it's pretty funny. Every, PR wise, Amber Heard is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I just, I thought it was funny. Um, I, I saw a, a post on Twitter. Yeah. It was a petition to replace all of Amber Heard's scenes with Bruce Campbell. <laughs> yes, that is a real petition going and, around. And Aquaman too. <laughs> if you don't know who Bruce Campbell is, he played the Evil Dead. He's a good friend of Sam Raimi, who recently directed uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yep. Um, he's in all the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man Also directed movies. by Sam. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Great, funny, funny person. He, he's a, <laughs> a B-rate actor who's got... One hell of a chin. I wanted to call him a B-rate actor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think he's really great. He's done some cool stuff. <laughs> I, I love B-rate actors, but yeah. yeah. That is a funny petition to have. Mm -hmm. I would, man, that'd be, I, have, I think that would work. <laughs> Why not? Fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> so, first off, I want to start out with an apology of last week. Yeah, last week was... uh. A weird one. Yeah, we were just having a good time, and we got a little carried away. Got really weird. Mm -hmm. I got super excited. Yes. Some of those moments, you notice I dipped out audio or cut it. Yeah. We were uh, peaking bad. <laughs> yeah, and I made a joke, and it wasn't an offensive joke. It was just a bad joke. Yeah. So, I can't even repeat it because it's so bad, it doesn't even make sense. It didn't even make sense. No, yeah. So. But... Thank you for listening. We're back. This is episode 39. Wow, really? Yeah. I'm always amazed by like what number we reach. I keep feeling like we just started doing this yesterday. With, with Coffee Break and Garbage Eggs, mm -hmm. which has been, what, revitalized? Yeah, finding a rebirth recently. And Garbage Eggs is supposed to be more unkept, almost like this conversation here. Mm hmm but we do have things that we would like to talk about. Um, coffee break is more structured. Garbage eggs is just all over the place. That's yep. why it's called garbage. Yep, yep. We do have plans to keep it going in the future. Yeah, but it's not going to be like, uh, uh, clearly, if you've seen any of the uh, recent Garbage Eggs episodes about Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know that we're not keeping to any uh, structured schedule <laughs> with Garbage Eggs. No, it's, <laughs> it's all over the place, unlike coffee break except for you know there's been a few weeks or some break mm -hmm. there was a break and then last week it just it, that episode took me some time to come around to yeah but this one this one will be right up in no time yep yep yep. we're doing our best yep and we're almost at 40 with a total of uh, garbage eggs mm -hmm. we've done over 50 i think it's gotten to the point where it's been half a year since we've started Almost, almost a whole year. We're closer to a whole year. Yeah, wow. Shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, we've been doing this for a year? Look at us. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not a year yet. Almost. We're we'll, close. We'll figure that out and we'll figure out a fun little celebration. Mm -hmm. But this coffee break is dedicated to just having fun because right now the world out there is pretty bleak. And while it's important... To stand up for what you believe. Mm -hmm. I also think it's important to take take some time to 
decompress a little bit. Yes. And people need some things to distract themselves maybe for a little while. Yep. A lot of people, uh, video games or TV shows, just something to fall into to leave the world behind for a little bit. And when it comes to video games, and I agree with you, Mm -hmm. some distractions, something to get your mind off all this negativity. Yep. Video games, we've gotten a ton of cool announcements in the past few weeks. Mm Mm-hmm. But none of that has come out yet. Yeah, nothing is happening. I have resorted, I have done the uh, the summer tradition of resorting to just replaying one of the games I already have. I picked Fire Emblem Three Houses because I never actually finished. <laughs> I platinum Bug Snacks. Hell yeah. And yeah. I've been playing Pokemon Diamond again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been watching shows and shows and movies are pretty much all we have right now. Yeah. Um... Got caught up on the Orville yesterday. Ah. <laughs> the Orville's part of this. Okay, is it in your... Yep. All right, we'll get to it later. But I wanted to kick it off with something that I found very interesting over the weekend. Hmm. This is Box Office Trolls. We're in Box Office Trolls so early. Six minutes in? Wow, this might be the soonest we've ever had this. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's not much to talk about, but we're going to have fun because this is completely bonkers to me. Mm-hmm. And I say it all the time. Bonkers. If you ever played bonkers, you understand what that term means. I think just in general, people know what the word bonkers means. Yeah, but it became popular because of the board game. I've never played it. I don't even know what it looks like. You have pieces and you bonk them out of the way. Wasn't that Sorry? Well, Sorry adapted some of that, yeah. Oh. (laughs) Sorry is a great game. Uh, Probably the second greatest board game ever made. Sorry. First, Othello. I'm not cutthroat enough to play Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. I feel actually sorry. That's the problem. It's a five-letter word that means nothing. S-O-R-R-Y. It is five letters. Is that the tagline of the game? Me? No, it should be the tagline. <laughs> I believed you. You could have lied to me and I would have fucking believed you. <laughs> it would be a great tagline. Uh, so what's the bonkers thing? So in the, the box office... Number one was Elvis. Elvis just came out this last week. It wasn't it like yesterday or two days ago? Uh, Thursday night. Okay. I honestly didn't expect it to do this good. Like at all. What was the newest film? I guess. Next to Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. Wait. wait. Black Phone. Black Phone came out. Yep, yep, yep. We're looking. Buzz Lightyear's two, two weeks old now. Okay. So Elvis and Black Phone. Yeah. Elvis took number one at thirty-one million. I I just I guess I I doubt the boomers' uh, appreciation to go to the movies. I suppose because <laughs> that's also the only way I could picture Top Gun being as popular as it ended up being. So I want to see Elvis. Yeah, I'm, I mean, sure, it's a neat story. Mm-hmm. I I enjoyed uh. What was that Walk the Line? Mm-hmm. With Joaquin Phoenix playing um, Danny uh, Johnny Cash. Johnny, sorry, not Danny. I don't know who Danny Cash is. Okay, <laughs> Danny, can you please speak up for us? Danny Cash, if you're out there, we see you. <laughs> Whoever you are. Anyways, before we went to bed last night, Elvis and Top Gun Maverick were tied for first. Yeah. Turns out Top Gun did not make it. They actually made second. Still. With 29, 29 million. Sorry, my bad. Still, like, Goodness. being five weeks in, and you're still, like, up in the running for the it's first. It's the first film of 2022 to reach past one billion. Which one? Top Gun? Maverick. Wow. I can't imagine. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's because the original Top Gun ended up being so not great compared to what everyone has always said over time. Every breath you take. (laughs) Just just so bad. (laughs) It's awesome that Elvis and Top Gun are competing against each other and they're actually dominating the box office. I am curious who's who, because I made a joke about boomers going to see these movies. But I am curious, what is the age demographic of most people going to the movie theaters anymore? Because I don't think going to the theaters is really much of a pastime for, like, younger millennials and Gen Zers. 
They, they like going to the theaters. I don't know. Especially after the pandemic. I've seen a lot more people being like, mm, nah, we could just stream it. <laughs> Maybe. You know what really boosts the sales at a movie theater? Huh. Better food? Fritos and chili. Yes. God. We made chili last night, and it was delicious. But you add chi- add Fritos with it today? Oh, man. I just want more. <laughs> I told you it was a game changer, wasn't it? It's just sitting downstairs waiting for us. I'm going to have to... Wait till you melt some cheese on that? Oh. Uh, and I have to make dinner, and I'm just going to have to be there in the kitchen and not eat all of the Fritos and chili <laughs> <laughs> while I'm making my mashed potatoes. Oh, oh. <laughs> hmm. We're in the middle of our vegetarian diet. We are. We made a week. Mm-hmm. A whole week. I forgot to post the chili. So mm. by the time this comes out, the chili will be posted. Yes. <laughs> and then tonight's dinner will be showing up. Yep, yep, yep. It should be Tuesday morning when you see this, so. Yeah. Um, no, we've gone vegetarian. We're going to attempt it for a month. We're one week in. Well, it's more than a month. It's 35 days. Yeah. I plan to end this around... There was a reason behind it. <laughs> it's like the 25th of July. Okay. Was there that a reason for that day specifically? I wanted to push it out one extra week. Okay. Uh, a lot of people typically do like one month, which mm-hmm. is four weeks. Yeah. That's how you average a month, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, what about an extra week? We can go the distance, mm-hmm. <laughs> the extra mile. Uh, one week in to being vegetarian, um, I'm tired. <laughs> I get tired a lot more often. Mm-hmm. I'm a lot more hungrier. I am actually drinking coffee during coffee break. Uh, fun fact, usually we drink alcohol. <laughs> That's not true. We also drink coffee. We also drink coffee. I mean, during coffee break when we're recording it. This time I am actually drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that. But yeah. I also did a lot of physical labor today, and I'm actually really tired. Yeah. Uh, it's, um... It's not an excuse. It's a reason, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the biggest lifestyle change that I've noticed from going vegetarian. It's just general, um, just, just tired. Uh, just in general. It's not bad, though. Like, I understand. <laughs> you know what's a weird side effect? Hmm. Poop. Yes, which is always, like, the first thing when I've noticed when people talk about a dietary change, especially like this one, it's like, how's your bowel movements? It's like, well, random stranger, I'm glad you're interested. (laughs) So, Saturday we made a meal. Uh Uh-huh. And and I'm not going to get into the details here to gross you guys out, but Uh, this meal was awesome. It was spicy. I talked about it today. Yeah. And I think... That is my preferred way to eat chicken wings. Really? I had the last of the leftovers today, and I was also like, this is really good. Because it's not fall apart bready. Because there's no bread, actually. <laughs> it, it, I think if I did a little revamping on it, mm-hmm. I think I can get it just right. Oh, so basically what it was, it's cauliflower. Yes. Ghost broccoli. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... We cover them in milk, mm-hmm. but we're lacto ov vegetarian. Yeah, we mentioned this last week. That's what we're doing. But so we're, we're we still... can eat milk and cheese. Yeah, and like eggs. And eggs. Yeah. <laughs> it's because we're not true vegetarians. Um, this to shock the system, clean mm-hmm. it out. Uh, stop. Uh, meat's expensive. So, you don't buy meat? <laughs> well, apparently Impossible Meat's really expensive, too. Yeah, we did end up getting Impossible Meat for dinner tonight. We'll find out how that goes. I mean, I've liked Impossible Meat before, so I imagine it's going to be fine. It just might be a weird texture. What was it? So, you cut the florets, which are like little trees. Mm-hmm. You cut the stems off, and then you lather that in milk and then uh, flour. Breadcrumbs if you want them. Yeah, but I don't think it's necessary. We used Italian breadcrumbs just because we've had them for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would recommend panko. Panko? Panko is another way to say that. Yeah, I've, I've heard it both ways. Um, it was a light coating you did too. Yes, and it wasn't a solid one. Mm-hmm. Put that onto a uh, baking sheet. Bake it for a little bit. Yep. Then on the 
the the stove, mm -hmm. your buffalo sauce or whatever sauce you want to go with. Yeah, we went with buffalo. Um, and some butter. Yeah, it makes it thicker. like Thicker and uh, not nearly as vicious vinegary. Yes, which helped a lot. The vinegar wise gets cut. Then you pull them out at this right time. You lather them in the buffalo. Mm -hmm. And then you put them back in and keep baking them. And yeah. they come out all crispy and buffalo like yeah a lot like a like just chicken wing but without any actual deep frying which was great <laughs> yes we've been avoiding deep frying so far yeah baking we, a lot we there is a recipe that we're going to attempt sometime this week about frying avocados that should be tuesday night but uh I don't think we're, we're not deep frying. Are we deep frying or are we just frying the, I don't know how exactly it's going to work out. You know, I'm not too sure either. I guess we'll have to figure it out. <laughs> I just, I know it's possible and I want to try. Yeah, yeah. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. I can already tell I've lost weight and we're only a week in. You as well. <laughs> I read my horoscope for tomorrow. Yeah. And they said, whatever is the impossible never stopped you. And I was like, that's true. Mm. I, uh, I have tarot <laughs> cards that I made. Mm -hmm. So I do I do my own uh, card of the day with my horoscope. <laughs> yeah. I haven't done one in a while, though. And you're right. The weight loss is almost immediate. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Like, I haven't done anything extra physically, but I'm losing weight. Mm hmm But I guess that's the payoff. I'm tired, but I'm skinnier. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> also, in the mornings, you just wake up ready to go. Yes. Like, I don't, almost don't need coffee in the morning. I like having coffee just because it's a habit of mine. Mm hmm But, yeah, it's like 10 minutes of, oh, groggy, and then bam, you're awake. Mm -hmm. You're like, whoa. Yeah. It's nice. It's really nice. Go vegetarian for a while, guys. Check <laughs> it out. <laughs> so, back to box office trolls. Yeah. Uh, Elvis, number one, at 31 million. Top Gun Maverick. Number two at 29 million. Jurassic World Dominion, 26 million. And mm. number third, a lot of people hate this movie. Yeah. I've read the plot. I, I will watch it, obviously, but. It sounds forced, unnecessary, like not what anyone wanted with this. Did, did I tell you about the locust? You did. Okay. You did. <laughs> for those who watched it, yes, this is going to be an issue for you. It was an issue for me just reading it. I was just like, I don't get it. Speaking of locusts, I can hear the locusts outside. Can you hear that? That hum? I don't know if you guys can hear that. They're out there. <laughs> what? what are you doing? You what? Can you not hear them? Do you not hear them right now? No. Am I going crazy? I swear to God, I can hear them. <laughs> talking about crickets? No, yeah, that's locusts. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> what? What the fuck? We is get happening? them around here. <laughs> no, we don't. We get grasshoppers and locusts and prey mantis. I, I, you, locusts. You just said it. Crickets. My bad. Oh, yeah. My bad. You're gonna make me go crazy. <laughs> you already crazy. No. <laughs> yes, you did that on your own. No, I might have. <laughs> Number four, Black Phone, 23 million. Mm -hmm. Good job, guys. Also doing way better than I expected it to. This looks like the most interesting film in theater right now to me. Honestly, yeah. But I don't want to sit there and watch a horror film. No, not in theaters. <laughs> For its second week in the box office, Ooh. guaranteed an obvious win, coming in at number five, Pixar. Yep. Disney's Pixar, the undefeated reigning champions of animation sure is light year nobody's watching this nope. nobody likes it I it took a 64.1 percent fall i looked it up on google today like reviews it's sitting at a, like a 2.5 out of out of five on ratings damn yeah and I tried to find reviews for it, but all the reviews I could see were, like, five-star reviews. And so I'm wondering if they're, like, buying out her reviews to make it look better. <laughs> they're trying to make it hush. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Apparently it's just boring. Hmm. <laughs> and, like, wandering and undeveloped. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. But uh, I was so tired of Pixar. I am, too. I just... 
I was mentioning it earlier even. They, they rely on making you cry over actually telling a good story. That's true. And I'm sick of it. It's not good for storytelling. It's just emotional manipulation. <laughs> so I've said before I drew the line at Brave because I don't think Brave is that great. It's really not. But when I really drew the line, and it wasn't Cars 2. You think it would be Cars 2 where I got so pissed off I'd be done with it. But it was actually Inside Out. Yeah. You and I, I just couldn't. I've seen it, and, like, it's uh, it's good, I suppose. It's not bad, but the more I think about it, the more I'm like, but it wasn't actually good. It just made me cry, and that's what makes me think it was good, but when I the more I look at it, the more I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't get these kids' movies that often. Like... Coco was good. Coco was good. Encanto was great. Yes. That's all I got. Yeah. A lot of them a lot of them have just gotten kind of boring. I'm tired of them all being like people too. Like not create like the same looking art style and art direction. And it's just people. <laughs> I'm just like I just think about Pixar especially and I think about, you know, you had monsters, you had ants, you had toys robots you had robots they had all these things and now a it's flying just flying house here is a person but this one becomes a fish here is a person but this one's a... it's just i'm just i don't know it's uncreative feeling to me what's your favorite pixar my favorite pixar film god i don't know uh do you have an answer depends what day you ask me because today i'll tell you it's monsters inc Monsters Inc. is really good. It's f- fucking funny, that's for sure. I don't know if it's my favorite though. I watched a lot of Incredibles, but I don't. That's know. a good one. It is a good one, but I, don't, I didn't like the second one at all. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure I'll think of it. Okay. Number six, Doctor Strange. Yep. Two, for one point seven, funny. That it's still in theaters because you can go watch it on Disney Plus. Right now. And we have yet to do so. And it's all my fault. Because I don't want to see it. Because it's going to make me upset. (laughs) Number seven. (laughs) I will watch it. (laughs) On my own. Tonight. I'm just going to (laughs) not. Number seven. Jung Jung Geo. I might have said that wrong. Jug Jug Geo. Jug Jung Jug Jug so one jug has one G and the second jug has two G's. Is this from I imagine another country cuz with a name like that <laughs> We're ch- we're looking into it. Two couples from different generations confront their issues after it's a marriage. Bollywood film. Ah. Okay, so somehow the Bollywood films always show up. They always pop up. It's interesting. Because they make a ton of money over there. For us, like, making a billion Mm -hmm. to them is, like, just, like, making a million. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, we just kind of hit that threshold. Bollywood's cool. I like Bollywood. (laughs) (laughs) Everything, everywhere, all at once at number eight. Still in the box office. 14 weeks in box office. 14 weeks. That's a long time. That's more than three months. 533,000, not million thousand, for mm-hmm. a total of 66 million. A24's highest grossing film still going strong. Yeah. When do you think they're going to pull it? Like, yes. it's down 43%. So the, the industry standard is 45 days. 40- That's why we have Doctor Strange. Ah. Uh, That's why we got Batman. Okay. The Batman. The Batman. The only Batman. The real bad. The one that's way too long. Oh my god! <laughs> Just end. Roll the credits. <laughs> my god! I get it. You save the day. <laughs> uh, Bob's Burgers number nine. Plummeting. <laughs> yeah, but it's an adult animation film. Like, but apparently people didn't really want it. Like even fans of Bob's Burgers just like. Eh. Did you know Family Guy is supposed to get an animated film? Really? Mm-hmm. What? Why? They're still working on it. They've been working on it for over 10 years. Oh, the hell no. Yep. <laughs> That's going to be Developmental hell. Bad. <laughs> and number 10, The Bad Guys, which is also out on DVD now. Damn, that happened quickly. 
Well, I guess 10 weeks. Well, isn't it crazy? I remember being a kid. It would take like a year. Like you would see something in the movies. Mm-hmm. Like Pokemon, the first movie. You see it in theaters. Whoa. Why is it always that movie with you? Because that's the one that made me think about this. Where I went and saw it in theaters and I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then like a year or a year and a half later, finally it's out on VHS. And I was like, wow, now I can finally get it. And I just remember sitting there reflecting that it would take so long to get it out commercially. And now it's just like, eh, here it is. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told this story. Uh, the Fellowship of the Ring came out mm-hmm. in theaters. And my dad and I went to go see it. Now it's just a boy. Loved it. I woke up one morning and I was just thinking about Moria mm-hmm. and them fighting the cave troll. And I was like, that was so cool. So good. And I walked out in the kitchen and my dad was like, do you want to go see it again? And I was like, yeah. So we saw it twice. Awesome. I mean, what a great way to just experience high fantasy as a child. Mm -hmm. Then they announced that the movie was coming out on DVD. Yeah. And my dad ran, took me with him, (laughs) ran to Blockbuster. Yep, yep. To pre-order the special edition DVD. Ooh. The extended cut? No. Oh. Those weren't out yet. Oh. Just to pre-order. Edition. Yeah, it came with like two other discs of, oh, you know, like all that. the other stuff. Yep, yep. But to pre-order a, a Blockbuster. A Blockbuster video. <laughs> you know how excited I was to know that I get to watch that movie again? Pretty dang hype, I bet. <laughs> yeah. And that's just a crazy thing because now it's like, yeah, I just saw it in theaters and now it's on my streaming. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, stop it. You've so lucky a part of me is like you know what i could get this game and download it on my switch but another part of me is like no i want to get the box (laughs) hold it (laughs) oh i think only few things are worth ever having in a box well i think it's especially like now that i know that you can't cert your certain games won't work on your switch if you can't connect to the internet Mm -hmm. and i was like fuck that i want to be able to play my switch no matter what (laughs) I get that. Um, I've only seen one movie twice in theaters. Uh, and this is... Pokemon, if, the first movie? No. I only saw the one What time. a surprise. <laughs> uh, if my either of my sisters are listening, um, this will be a surprise. I never told them this, but I saw Endgame, not Endgame, uh, Infinity War first with you, and then, because we went to theaters, and mm-hmm. then... My, me and my sisters went and I had to act surprised because I didn't want to ruin it for them because they're like we're gonna go see it that's crazy and I'm like yeah it is crazy and I had to act like surprised and stuff <laughs> Infinity I, War I didn't want to ruin it for them <laughs> Infinity War is not that good I mean it does only get good without his companion piece I enjoyed seeing it twice in theaters that was really cool very cinematic and stuff um but yeah I never told them <laughs> So if they're listening, this is the true test of whether or not they actually listen to our podcast. <laughs> if they don't respond, just kind of tweet at them. Mm-hmm. Be like, Haha, we know secrets that you don't know. We, we're all in the loop. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about Orville earlier. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're done with box office trolls. Hooray. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got caught up on Orville. We, had, we were two episodes behind. Um, this season so far is eh, it's fine. So Orville season three, New Horizons. This is potentially the last season. Doesn't yeah. mean it's actually over. I think it will find life somewhere. Maybe not in a television show, but it might get animated or comics or just books or something. Cause... I I think of Disney smart and they own it now. True. They wouldn't let it go. But then again, they made Lightyear. So. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, spicy. <laughs> um. Unlike my cauliflower buffalo wings <laughs> which were so delicious and spicy really good they were appetizing amazing um we also made a jalapeno cornbread which was also very spicy we've just uh, replaced protein with spices <laughs> that's true no uh, episode so okay so episode three of the orville they like go do this like hologram adventure thing whatever dude oh, okay the more when, i think about it the dumber it gets the high school <laughs> When they run into a high school, mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this, but I just got up and walked away. 
I did notice, yeah. <laughs> I was so upset. I was just like, oh, no. It was, like, at first I was intrigued by the mystery. But then at the end, it was just like, but why'd you pick those things? And she was like, I don't know. I just kind of picked random stuff. And I'm like, well, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> why would you just ran and high yeah. school? 50,000 years <laughs> of, what, high evolution? Yeah. Uh, Whatever she high school with a up. cave troll randomly thrown yeah, in there. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's what we definitely need. Sure. It was just uh, these five characters go from one scene to the next, and they just walk forward going, we can't go back, move forward, here's this next one, moving It was very forward. Twilight Zone. It was. It felt like there was no agency with our characters, and it wasn't a very good reveal at the end for the mystery. Like, when, I re- when they realized they weren't actually off the planet, that was kind of dope, but the, the rest of the story felt first draft to me. Yeah. Could have been better. And then the fourth episode. <laughs> fourth episode is, uh, what, plot driven? Yeah. But they throw a, a weird, like, egg at you, and you're just like, what do you do with. Why really? now? Yeah. What was the setup? I literally said out loud, wow, look at that shark down there. I didn't know we could jump this high. <laughs> and it did. And it was just like, okay, I guess it, we're going to have to accept this. It sure did. It's like, no wonder this is going to be your potentially last season. <laughs> so, Master Chef. Yes. We're watching that. New season's coming out. The adult U.S. Master Chef we're watching. Yeah. Uh-huh. Junior just wrapped up. Junior wrapped up. God, Junior was so bad. Junior, it's always bad. I don't like Master Chef Junior. It's so bad. I hate the kids. <laughs> it's so fake, and I'm gonna watch it again next year. It is fake. It's I, I'm I'm fine with it. Is when they're like, yeah, I made this like high echelon like gastrique with egg souffle and blah 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 blah. I'm like, I've seen grown ass adults with actual culinary experience fail to make this. There's no way this fucking ten year old did it. <laughs> so. One of the kids, he, he's like nine, and he says he's going to make a pea flower s- sorbet. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, I understand what a sorbet is. I understand what a pea is. Flower? Like like the flower of pea plants? Yeah, that's what he used. I don't, like. Ooh. And I was like, no nine-year-old is like, I'm going to do this. It's, it's, stop it. And you can tell they feed them lines. It's like, like I think it was early on. One of them was just like. I'm a I'm a southern country girl, and I want to cook for my southern country heritage. It's like, yeah, you definitely struggled to spit out that line of dialogue. No one you got eliminated first. <laughs> Kid can't act for shit. He should be kick out the ugly fat ones first. That is true. Like, <laughs> no, Master Chef Junior, I think it's so fake. And, like, if it was believable, if I could actually believe these kids were cooking these things, I would be fine with it. But I don't. So I remember when they first showed the the, the very first season, right? I started following it. Because I was already into MasterChef and I loved it. Mm-hmm. It was like season five or six of MasterChef when they started Junior. Yeah. And I was watching, I think, the third or fourth episode. There's a moment where these kids are told that they have to make a beef wellington as good as Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. And I watched them build this wellington put it in the oven and turn up the dials and i just took the remote and threw it across the room and shattered it and then turned off the tv i'm just kidding it wasn't that dramatic i just turned off the tv okay (laughs) because i was like there's no way there's no way some 10 year old kid is gonna know how to yeah gordon ramsay made his signature dish even if you follow him like to a t even he, he'll then. tell you stories of it and how he struggled to make it. Like, there's no way. It's there, There's no way. I just don't believe it whatsoever. I don't know how they could be faking it, but I'm sure they are. <laughs> yeah, it's it's absurd. So, Master Chef season 12? I think it's 12. The, the latest season. The newest one. 12. <laughs> well, they're bringing back the old contestants who never became Master Chefs. Yep. Have another chance, but they're all in the culinary industry. Yes. So, I think a lot of... I, I, okay, so here's the thing. I kind of go in always assuming it's kind of rigged. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it's specifically like, this person is the villain character of this season, where they're generally unpleasant, and they don't get along with a lot of the contestants, and they always cause problems. And they're also not that good at cooking, but they always eke by and manage to make it until the end of the season for those views! Yep. And, um, I think a lot of it is very, like, predetermined and picked and stuff. And so I think a lot of it's going to come down to, uh, well, you're already successful, so you don't get to become this master chef this time, because you're already successful. But we won't say that. We'll be like, oh, your eggs were slightly under seasoned. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way they're breaking down this season, where it's like one challenge is a whole episode. Yeah, they did this last. Even though season. challenges are two part episodes. Yeah, I, I, Master Chef Kids did it right, where they do a challenge and then you win immunity. And then the person who wins immunity goes up, and then they do their second challenge. All part of the same episode. And that's when the, someone gets eliminated. This is how they started doing it last time, and I thought it was dumb. And I thought they did it just for COVID, to, like, stretch out the episodes, because they couldn't, like, go on location and do things. No, they're just stretching out episodes. They are. I mean, they're already stretching it. Like, last time, didn't it take them, like, four or five episodes just to get the contestants figured out? <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, they are milking those contestant episodes so bad. <laughs> First three or four episodes are always the worst. It so is. So, Miss Marvel. Yes. The new episode, episode three. Uh-huh. What are your thoughts? I'm... I don't know. I don't know. I want to like it more. My problem is... She keeps, like, letting herself get... Everyone is letting themselves get distracted with the stupid, like, you have a crush on a boy subplot. And it is so weirdly shoved in the middle of everything. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, we're these super special gin people, and we're here telling you something important. But let's literally interrupt all of that to go, do you two have a crushes on each other? The good for her is so tone deaf <laughs> and hurts the flow of the episodes so i noticed there's two cool is easter eggs in this one mm. there's a flashback where you see her grandmother with the djinn mm -hmm. excavating a, a tomb yeah and they find one of the djinn's bodies where you just see a blue arm and yeah she takes one bracelet yes the one that goes on her left arm yeah and kamala has the right one yeah 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 and or I might have gotten that backwards. You know what I mean. Vice versa. <laughs> they show a, a, a bird's eye view shot above the head. It's a crane shot. Mm -hmm. And you see they're standing on a platform and there's the ten rings. Which I was already suggesting that this might have to do with the same type of magic that Shang-Chi can use mm -hmm. through his ten rings. Which makes sense. Later on, uh, Bruno. Yeah. Her... Her Caucasian friend, mm -hmm. who's got a huge crush on her, and they keep pushing him to the side. That's what you're talking about. Yep, yep, yep. And so this whole thing. <laughs> He's trying to do research, and her dad comes in, and he reads the the articles that he has, or the papers. Yeah. And that the djinn are evil, and that it takes a primordial force to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the legend of the Ten Rings. Yeah. Those are primordial. You can't... They're from this planet. That's neat being able to tie it all together. And then those uh, those papers that he got, those documents he brings up, were from Dr. Eric Selvig. Yeah. Which Ooh. is Skarsgård and Thor. Mm -hmm. He's the crazy scientist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those scientist characters from Thor pop up so frequently, and I never remember any of them because they weren't fun. <laughs> They were all very boring characters. <laughs> okay, I don't agree with you on that. Maybe in hindsight, like, I don't know. <laughs> my, my biggest issue was, it's always teenage drama. Mm -hmm. Fine, get it, got it. It's a teenage-oriented story. But Makes sense. <laughs> but the Jin start out as good guys in that episode, and then the later half, they're the bad guys trying to kill her. They're just, and very suddenly, and we're bad. And we need you to help <laughs> us, but they're trying to kill her. Yeah. Like, really knock it off. It was just like, we're, we're on your side, we're on your side. We're on your side. And then it's like, okay, let me finish my brother's wedding first so I have time to, like, figure this out and decide. We've ran out of time. We're evil now. Get Kill her. It's yeah. like, what? <laughs> and then I loved, at the end, it was, oh, we have to go to uh, Pakistan? I don't remember. They're going back to the Middle East, but 
I noticed this, and this is going to tie into the next one, my Marvel theory. Mm -hmm. First of all, Moon Knight and Miss Marvel have the same beats. Yes, which might just be uh, whoever's in charge of making the um, episodes. Like... Six episodes, it's the same beats. By the third episode of Moon Knight, he's in Cairo. Yeah. At the end of this episode, she has to go to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So now the second half of the show is them going off on an adventure. It wouldn't be a true action adventure show if you didn't actually go to distant foreign lands. Yep. Heaven forbid we just stay in Jersey. <laughs> that couldn't be cool or anything. Whatever. Yeah. I, I'll finish it. I'm kind of... Like, it's a... Uh... Like with Doctor Strange, I'm kind of just marveled out. Yeah. I'm like tired of it. I'm tired of having to try to remember all 900 million movies and characters and go, oh, what is this a reference to? Is it one we've seen yet? Or is this setting up something down the line? I'm tired of the like, like theory boards with strings and pins trying to connect the dots everywhere. Yep. I just want to watch a movie, guys. I don't want it to be homework. <laughs> so here's my Marvel theory. Hmm. Okay. And I brought this up to you yesterday. The first Marvel show was WandaVision. Yes. Oh. And it did <laughs> so well. When Wanda and Vision were just kind of B-rate characters. Yeah. It did so well, they're like, what can we do with Wanda? Yeah. Well, we could shove her into this movie and maybe make that work. How long will that take? Uh, one to two years. Doctor Strange. Okay. Next one. Loki. Everyone loves Loki. We got this Norse mythology going on. What can we do? Oh, let's shove that into Thor, Love and Thunder. Mm -hmm. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, here's my jump, but let me explain this one. Civil War introduces Black Panther. Falcon and Winter Soldier, Falcon is a black man becoming Captain America. Yeah. We have these heavy ties towards black. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, and uh, Black Panther was supposed to come out sometime this last year, wasn't it? Yes, and it got delayed due to uh, the sad passing of mm -hmm. Chadwick. Yes. But we can see that. Then the next one... Oh, there's also another tie where they brought... Uh, one of the villains from Black Widow over U.S. Agent. Mm -hmm. He will pop off in uh, Thunderbolts, which was recently announced. Yeah. Which is Marvel's answer to Suicide Squad. Yeah, I don't know. It's all just, it's all so much. <laughs> What's the, um, <clears throat> I see where your trail of thought oh, is Oh, Hawkeye here. is the one that doesn't really fit in, but that's because Hawkeye splits off and it's actually for television shows. Mm-hmm. Now, Hawkeye takes place in Christmas, yes. so it's Endgame, uh -huh. or not Endgame, uh, No Way Home, uh -huh. right? So, who also is in No Way Home? It's... Who's his lawyer? Oh, ba -ba -da. Daredevil. Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock. I was trying so hard. Who's for... I main... was just thinking of the actors. <laughs> Who's the main villain of Hawkeye? Of Hawkeye? Oh, Kingpin. Kingpin. Yep, ties together. Now, we also have Echo spinning out of that. Mm-hmm. Then we get, uh, well, what if it's going to get its own season? You can make all sorts of arguments there. What if apparently ties into Doctor Strange? Yes, it does. Yep. And then we now have Miss Marvel, which will tie into the Marvels later on. Mm hmm Along with uh, Doctor Strange's Illuminati, Monica Rambeau. Yep. She plays Miss Marvel. She and, will also be in the Marvels. And um, Moon Knight is in there. Oh, Moon Knight ties in the Blade and the Black Knight. Yep. So that's a nut. that's the thing. I'm so sick of every little thing. Like, this is a stepping stone to that. And this is another stepping stone to this. But this was this other stepping but stone I, nine years ago. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I'm seeing how they're making them stepping stones. So we watched Moon Knight. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was fine. A year later, bam, you get Blade. Yeah. And you're like, wait, look at all these guys. We know all of them. You remember? I mean, you remember Moon Knight? Yeah, I, it was okay, right? I get it. I don't know. I'm kind of just tired of it. There's it's so much to keep up with. And I see what they're doing. They're they're splitting off um another thing Hawkeye is doing is they're also making the uh the Young Avengers a thing, mm -hmm. which will be um Spider-Man, 
uh, Hawkeye, new Hawkeye. Uh, probably America Kate. Chavez is going to be in there. Is that her name? Yes. America, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Marvel, probably. Uh, all these kids are going to do their thing. And I see what we're doing. I get it. I'm just tired of it. <laughs> Who's going to lead them? I don't care. <laughs> just tell a story. I don't want another nine years of... Did you watch this one? Well, you gotta watch this summary video to understand. And here's this important moment that you'll miss out on if you don't watch all of these. Ugh. It's just like real comics. Like, mm -hmm. I tried getting into comics a lot. It's and, so deluded. And that's the thing. It's like, I don't know where to begin. There's a million of them. I can't keep up with all of them. I can't even afford to get all of them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do I want to drop money to, to buy another stupid Marvel movie that'll pay off 10 years from now or could i just i don't know watch a good one <laughs> watch elvis a nice contained story or something i think oh, this is an impressing story I, like, but it's contained i don't care if it's happy or sad the marvel's <laughs> just becoming a chore at this point and i'm getting kind of sick of it i noticed i noticed a lot of fatigue from you as well i'm gonna watch doctor strange by myself like even now like miss marvel like it's hard like i'm gonna keep watching but yeah. yeah. Sitting through Moon Knight was hard enough. Next show, Dark Winds on AMC Plus. Yep. God, I love it. I uh, I tried watching and I fell asleep. Uh, not that was that was my B. I I was tired. It's not a reflection like, on the show. That was all me. I tried so hard to stay awake. The first episode was great. God, it's <laughs> so good. I love the actor. I don't remember his name. The main guy. Longhorn? Yeah. He's done a lot of other stuff. Um, like he's in a Hawkeye, for example. <laughs> he is. He plays Echo's dad, uh, Native American actor. Uh, oh. He's also in Fargo. He's in Reservation Dogs. Yes, he's in, is, He's plays the sheriff again. That's super good. <laughs> uh, God, it's, it's about Navajo tribal police trying to solve murders of bank robbery or heist mm -hmm. and uh, dealing with spiritualism yeah cultural spiritualism it sounds like a lot of fun i recently fell in love with mysteries thanks to uh reacher <laughs> so i was reading that dark winds is actually based on a book series yeah which reminded me of reacher nice and so that uh the two, the sheriff and his deputy, mm -hmm. who is also kind of a bad guy, but not really a bad guy. Bah, bah, bah. That these book series are about those two teaming up, going to solve these crimes. That's cool. I'll probably like, I don't know, binge all of Dark Quins at some point in time. It's great. Um, I don't think many people are watching it. The last AMC show I brought up that I really enjoyed mm -hmm. was That Dirty Black Bag. Yep. So good. I don't think anyone watched it. Great production value. That tends to be the thing with AMC. They're really good. Really high production value. Halt and catch fire. Amazing just stories and characters. And no one watches them until it's way too late. <laughs> Except they, they Except only, for me. They I only, end up watching them. And they, I'm like, why? <laughs> Keep it going. They only looked out with Breaking Bad and uh, Walking Dead. Those have been the only two AMC. Mad Men. Oh, Mad Men. I always forget that's AMC. I can't stand Mad Men. I don't want to watch it either. <laughs> no, I just can't stand it. I don't even hate John Hamm. I just don't like it. Yeah. It's like Secession, but shit. Wow. Wow. And it's before Secession. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking backhand. <laughs> know your place. <laughs> Understand it. <laughs> Dark Winds on AMC+. Plus. I love it. Um, if you're curious about a really dark mystery thriller, this would be up your alley. There is violence, but not as intense. Uh, it's more about solving a mystery and very Jack Reacher esque. Nice. It might escalate into a full out gunfight. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> and there's, there's been some hints. Yeah. <laughs> so, last week was the last and final episode of Obi Wan. Kenobi. Hello! We did a whole special little podcast called Garbage Eggs. Yep. On we... all six parts. Yes. 
it's complete now, so you can actually go listen to them after you watch them. Mm -hmm. We combined episode one and two together, yeah. part one and two, and then part we, five and six. Yeah, the last two episodes together. Because we got lazy with five. Sorry. <laughs> Loved it. There's talks about a new, like, a sequel series. What do you think? I don't think it needs a sequel series. I do. Why? Because I want it. Because you just want to see more? Yeah. I would be happy seeing more, but I also think it was really good where it left off. Honestly. No, just give me more. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't want a spinoff, which is another thing with Marvel shows, is that now they've made everyone think that every single character deserves their own spinoff. <laughs> That's true. And I don't think it'd be necessary. Get a Reva spinoff? I mean, as much as I like Reva, I don't think we need a spinoff for her. I found this article listing, I think it was by, like, comicbooks.com or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're, like, top greatest Inquisitors, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you go down the list, you're like, okay, cool. So there's, like, fifth brother who shows up. Yeah. And then there's uh, fourth sister who's mm -hmm. done nothing. Yep. She's way up there in, like, the loser ranks. There's some other crazy ones that we've never seen. And then number two, Grand Inquisitor, number one, Reva. And I was like, hold on. That's a, that, that, clearly it was a, I made this list because I saw this. And uh, and I just want to get your clickbait, mostly. <laughs> and I was just like, Reva is not, okay. <laughs> Maybe that's why her lightsaber wasn't a full circle, because she wasn't fully committed. Bam, I just Ooh. cracked it. Didn't even mean to. So, next, I think, is an animated show about Star Wars. Oh, yeah? I think Star Wars excels in animation. Well, yeah, that's... Okay, well... Well, I mean, like... <laughs> you know kind of I mean. created it, but okay. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, next one, I think, might be the Jedi thing, where it's three episodes about Dooku and three episodes about Ahsoka. Ooh, I, that one sounds... I would love that. That sounds cool. And then we get the next live action show in August, which is Andor, which is a prequel to uh, Rogue One. Yeah. Spoilers, he dies. I have very little interest in Andor, but I'll watch it. I had little interest in Mando, too. <laughs> and that ended up being great. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. So that, that was our updates on shows. Mm. Uh, you got any other show in there? Nope. Okay. Not really. Okay, I thought this was fun news because I just love talking about him because he's my man crush. He's the best. He is so funny. The one, the only. Peacemaker. John Cena. <laughs> Apparently John Cena is a huge fan of Metroid and back in 2017 approached Nintendo and begged them to make another Metroid. <laughs> and now we have Metroid Dread. <laughs> and then they did. They're like, just for you, John Cena. <laughs> John Cena's cool. What a sweetheart. I think it's funny that he was like, yeah, no, I asked them. So they made Dread. <laughs> it, was, it was me. I did it. I saved the Metroids. <laughs> There's also rumors that uh, there will soon be a Nintendo Power Hour. Oh, yeah? That will reveal Metroid Prime Remake. I'm, they've been Slated for this year. This it, is a rumor. I don't. It's just like uh, Star Fox when they we were like, what we're, is that? We're making a new Star Fox for the. No, what is Star Fox? Star Fox? No. What? What? What is Star Fox? You don't know what Star Fox is? No. We, we know. How do you not know what Star Fox is? Are you talking about that old run out franchise back from the GameCube days? Like with Fox Star Mc Fox Assault? With like Fox McCloud and Falco Lombardi. Yeah. yeah. Slippy Toad. Why would you revitalize that? But they did. They put it on the Wii U. Yeah, what was it called? Star Fox Zero. Which was the score people gave it. Ooh. <laughs> and now apparently it was just really bad. But yeah, similarly, they announced that. They took forever to finally release it. And then it was trash. But leading up to them finally releasing it every single time, they're like, they're going to announce it this time. It's like, they're not. That's not happening. <laughs> They've been talking about Metroid Prime for years. <laughs> yeah. I can only keep my hopes up. I would love to have another Metroid. They can't even fucking commit to announcing Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs> That's the game people really want. <laughs> Breath's Gone Wild? 
<laughs> Preston's wild electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Breathing too hard. <laughs> Breathing too hard. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's just Link kneeling over <laughs> with a zero stamina bar. Just boo 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 boo. It's just him sitting next to Zelda, and Zelda's pissed off, and he's just being a mouth breather, just like. <sighs> and he's like, just, just stop. <laughs> That's the name of this episode. I had so many better names, but this one's going to take it. That visual is going to keep me going for like a week. <laughs> okay, so uh, not much upcoming. No, nah, apparently there's going to have a Nintendo Direct for indie showcases sometime this week or something. Metro Prime Remake? Uh, it's not an indie game. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I had a very dramatic face going. In the middle of like these really cute, wholesome indie developers finally getting their chance to break through, Nintendo stomps and is like, "Here's our AAA!" And then all the indie guys are like, "Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's not our time to shine." <laughs> so, Monster Hunter Sunbreak, which is Sunbreak. Oh, is that DLC? The, the DLC to Rise. They're still doing DLC. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and then. The big movie that I'm very excited to see, just numbers wise, I, I don't care about Despicable Me, I didn't care about the Minions, but Minions Rise of Gru. Yep. Which is Minions 3? I think so. Yeah. This one, the reviews are outstanding. They're like, this is the greatest thing ever. I, you know. And they're talking about it like it's Shrek. Shrek's real good. The and first two. The <laughs> way Lightyear went. Let's let's just knock it out of the place. Minions is gonna destroy Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> it's almost like he needed all the other toys in the toy chest to help him. Ooh, Ooh I guess now we know which one's the better toy, huh, Buzz? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's poison the box office. Oh shit! No, um, I was mentioning this earlier. But with, like, you know, Pixar, and Disney does this too with their animated movies, how they sit there and, like, rely on the making you cry element of their movies. Yeah. Uh, Minions, I don't think I'm gonna cry watching Minions. <laughs> if I'm coming to a movie for a good time, I'm here for a good time. And I think Minions is gonna be the kind of movie to deliver on that. <laughs> yeah. I have zero interest in watching it, but I understand if kids do. Whatever. Fuck it. It's not for me. No. Yeah. Well, I just hope it wins. Yes. Yeah, I'm little... actually going to hope that the underdog finally takes it. Are Minions the underdog? Haven't they been, like, topping the box office for every one of their movies? Just because there's a <laughs> million of them doesn't mean that they're constantly number one, okay? I don't know. There's, like, three Despicable Me movies, and now they've had six movies under their belt. Six? That's a lot of movies. <laughs> it is. That's a lot. That is. I liked the first Despicable Me. I thought it was fun. Steve Carell was fun. I like that song. Everyone else made fun of it from Pharrell Williams. For, for, for Pharrell. Yeah, you got it. I liked that song. I was White Gold. Uh, no. <laughs> You're thinking of? Are you thinking of Twenty Four Karat Magic? <laughs> is that what it's called? That's a different person. That's Bruno Mars. <laughs> <laughs> similar hats. Well, let's bring coffee break. <laughs> similar hats, so I don't I'm blame so, you. I'm <laughs> so happy uh, you guys came to rejoin us for this new episode. <laughs> and, uh, you know, have a good night. Think about your decisions. <laughs> Try not to focus too hard on the reality of... Are you serious? Yeah. I also liked a song Pharrell did for the third Despicable Me movie. Um, uh, Hug Me, Bring It In. But I only like it when it's sped up. The original version doesn't feel right. You gotta speed it up. TikTok. It's on TikTok. You can find it. <laughs> I'm so done with this. <laughs> but you don't like me talking about movies, songs from movies, but sped up specifically that you have not seen. <laughs> that was Coffee Break. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's, it's just focus on breathing too hard. <laughs> Legend of Zelda breathing too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good night. Or day. Maybe a weekend. Who knows? I don't know. What if...
You just enjoy yourself. That's a nice one. There you go.